If you're new to GarageBand on iPad, but aren't really sure where to start, in this video I'll share what I think you should do first when you download the app. Speaking of downloading the app, if you've yet to install GarageBand onto your iPad, here's a quick run through of how to get your hands on it. Open the App Store, tap on Search, then type in GarageBand. GarageBand will pop up in the search results. Next, just hit Get and it'll start downloading to your device. Once it's downloaded, hit Open and you'll be taken to the welcome screen. GarageBand will now ask for permission to access your device's microphone, which you'll likely want to allow. And on the next page, you'll be asked if GarageBand can send notifications when new downloadable content is available. Whether or not you want to allow notifications is entirely up to you. I would say that GarageBand doesn't spam you with daily notifications or anything like that. You'll only really get one when a new sound pack or update is available. After that, you'll get access to the sound browser. The sound browser is where you'll find all of GarageBand's instruments, the audio recorder, guitar amp, the sampler, the sound library, and if you have installed other compatible music production apps on your device, the external apps function. Swipe left or right to view the different instruments available, then tap the one that you want to play. The options in the lower part of these cards take you directly to things like chord strips, notes views, or scales on touch instruments, gives you different rhythm input options on drum and drummer instruments, allows you to jump into certain presets on the amp and audio recorder, and allows you to select from different third-party instrument options on the external section. Most of GarageBand's touch instruments work in kind of the same way. There's a play area where you'll use on-screen keyboards, strings, or drums to play the instrument. You can change the sound of the instrument using the knobs, buttons and other controls in the controls area. Here's a closer look at GarageBand's Grand Piano Touch Instrument. Using the Grand Piano you can play notes, chords and scales. You can choose from different piano, keyboard and organ sounds by tapping the menu in the middle. You can tap the chord switch to change to the chords view. Here you can play higher chords by tapping the upper segments of a chord strip. And lower chords by tapping the segments at the bottom. There's also an autoplay function that you can use by turning the autoplay knob to one of four positions. Tapping a chord strip will play a pattern with the notes of that chord. You can tap a different strip to change the notes that are played, and the autoplay pattern will change slightly depending on whether you tap with one, two, or three fingers. When you're ready to record your touch instrument, tap record in the control bar. Recording will start at the current position of the playhead. The ruler shows the area being recorded in red. Any notes you play as well as any changes to sliders, knobs or other controls are recorded as well. When you're done recording, tap the play button in the control bar. Your recording will then appear in the tracks view as a region.
project's default to a BPM of 120 and a key signature of C major. You can change these settings and more by tapping on the Tracks View icon in the top left of the screen, then on the Cog icon in the top right of the Tracks View. Other options worth noting here is the ability to change time signature, metronome and counting options, and in the advanced section, the ability to turn on 24-bit audio resolution. I'd actually recommend turning this on and leaving it on ASAP. To get back to your touch instrument from the tracks view, tap on the instrument icon in the top left of the screen. If you want to record some real audio, like your voice for example, or an acoustic instrument like a guitar, you'll want to use GarageBand's audio recorder. You can head back to the sound library by tapping on the icon with the three squares on it in the top left of the screen. Then swipe until you see the audio recorder and tap on it to open. As the on-screen prompt says, capturing your recording is as easy as pointing your iPad towards the sound you want to capture and hitting record. The input meter will tell you if you're too quiet or too loud. You're aiming for maybe just over halfway for optimum recording volume. If the meter goes into the red, your recording will sound distorted. This is called clipping, and there's not really much you can do about it once you've recorded it. It'll be baked into that recording. So take some time to get your levels right before hitting record. Once you've finished recording, you can add some of these fun effects in the Fun tab. Or you can tap on Studio, then the menu in the middle for some more sensible and perhaps usable presets. GarageBand includes a set of royalty-free Apple-made audio and MIDI samples that you can use to easily add drum beats, bass lines, rhythm parts, synth leads, and other sounds to your project. To open the Loop Browser, tap the Loop Browser button in the control bar at the top of your screen. Bear in mind that the Loop Browser button is only available in Tracks View. You can filter what loops are shown in the browser by instrument, genre, or description, and the results list shows loops that match your search criteria. Drag a loop from the results list to an empty part of the track's view screen, aligning the left edge to where you'd like the loop to start playing. Note that blue audio loops will adjust to the BPM of your project, so they might sound a bit different than when you audition them in the browser. Apple regularly add new instrument patches, loops, drum kits, and more to GarageBand in the form of sound and producer packs. At the time of making this video, there are 29 sound packs and 9 producer packs available, and they are all absolutely free. You can peruse and download these packs in the sound library. You can find the sound library in GarageBand's sound browser, or by tapping the More Sounds icon found next to many of GarageBand's different touch instrument icons. When you open the sound library, you'll be greeted with a selection of different packs that you can download. You can find out more about a pack by just tapping on it.
you'll get an in-depth description of the pack, a list of what's included with the pack, and the ability to preview some purpose-built music that makes use of the contained sounds. The 8-Bit Legends pack, for example, contains 70 new Alchemy synth sounds, 7 drum kits, over 250 Apple loops, and an additional Live Loops grid. You can also bring your own samples that you have saved to your iPad into your GarageBand projects. Back on the Loop Browser, tap on Files, and you'll be able to view a list of any files you've imported to GarageBand previously. I have a couple sitting here already. At the bottom here, you want to tap on Browse Items from the Files app. From here, you can select which folder your files are located, then tap on which one you want to bring into GarageBand. After a few seconds, you'll see the file appear in the browser. Now, it's just a case of tapping, holding and dragging your file into a new track. From the alchemy synth to the drummer, the beat sequencer and the sampler, GarageBand has a lot of really powerful instruments and functionality that are beyond the scope of this video. For more information on all of that and loads more, watch this next. <laughs>